So we all know the legend that is Victor Axelsson, and if you know Victor Axelsson, you probably have seen his killer smash with his speed, precision, angle, and accuracy. Now how do we replicate that into our game? Well today I'm going to be showing you everything he does in his smashes that we can bring into our game, but keep into mind he has one thing that we do not have and that is height, unless you do have that. But there are certain characteristics of his smash that we can still bring into our game and we'll be covering all of that from how he hits his smashes, the different types of smashes he hits, when he hits those smashes, and how he sets up for those smashes. So if you want to watch and learn how to smash like Victor Axelsson, then make sure to support us with a like, comment, and subscribe, and watch until the end of the video. And for limited time only, if you want to join our free online badminton academy, then click the link down below. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're gonna break this video down into five parts. Steps one and two are going to be the different types of smashes he hits. Steps three and four are gonna be how he hits those smashes and when he hits those smashes. And step five is how to set up for those smashes. So the first thing we have to learn about his smashes is how to hit it and what type of smashes he hits. Now, you'll see that Victor Axelsson rarely ever hits very hard smashes. Instead, he goes for very accurate, precise smashes in what we call a stick smash. Now, a stick smash is just a smash with a smaller swing, faster swing, and with more precision. Now, how do we hit a stick smash, okay? So, when you're hitting a stick smash, first of all, let's start with our grip. You don't want to be holding the grip too far back into the racket. Why? Because the racket gets heavier and your swing will get bigger. In our stick smash, our swing needs to keep small so that we can be very accurate and precise. So we'll move our grip slightly forward into our racket while we're performing for the stick smash. All right, so now moving back into our stick smash, we'll do our basic footwork, of course. Once we're in the air, like our overhead swing, we lead with our elbow. Now the most important thing about the stick smash is keeping everything small. In your regular smash, you'll be swinging with your whole body and your arm. But in a stick smash, you'll come into the air. All you need to do is lead with your elbow and from here, keep it very small in just this circle of an area using your forearm, wrist, fingers, and pronation, tapping it down forwards. Now while you're doing this, you have to make sure that we're still keeping our contact point on the shuttle fast while we're hitting the bird. We don't wanna be flopping it through. We need to keep it fast and tap it down. And once you're finished the swing, you wanna make sure you swing all the way through and you guide it forward so that it creates that angle. And that's how you're gonna be hitting very precise smashes. Now when you're doing this, you have to make sure you get enough angle in the air so that you can bring it down not only precise, but with angle to make your opponents go down and move until they can't get it anymore. Now that we've learned the stick smash, you'll see if you look closely in Victor Axelsson's smashes, he likes to do the slice smash very often. The slice smash is exactly the same as a stick smash, but instead of hitting straight on on a contact point, we have a slight angle of slice on the shot. Now, it's a spectrum from flat contact point to slice how much slice we want to use. Victor Axelsson smashes uses slice on the lesser angle closer to the flat contact point because he wants to still keep it very quick on his speed of shot. But with that little bit of slice, it adds an angle into his shot. So how we hit the slice shot is, of course, we go to a normal tip, tap smash, stick smash again. But on contact, we want to make sure there's a little wrapping motion. For example, if we're hitting this way, we hit it and then wrap around the bird ever so slightly, like that, and we bring it forward. If we're hitting it in this direction, we hit it flat and we wrap it over in that direction, like that, and then we hit it forward. And that's gonna be your slice smash, which is a step up from your stick smash that's gonna create even more angle while keeping the speed on your shot, adding in the slice. One thing to focus on this is to not over slice. Because if you overslice, you'll make mistakes in your shots, it'll go into the net, or your bird speed will be too slow. The slice shot is just to add in a little bit more angle and deception in your swing because when you slice, you're able to swing even faster without the bird flying too far.
Now that we've learned the two types of smashes that he likes to hit, let's talk about the footwork and positions he uses in his smashes. So our third step is learning about his defensive smash position. Now this is one smash that Victor likes to use very often. How this is done is usually he sets up around the net where his opponent can get a high net shot and they push very flat. Now, even though he's not in fully in position, he still moves very quickly to go for that attacking shot. Why? That's because when your opponent is hitting so quickly at the net, they're not able to recover fully back to the center for a defensive shot. So you're using that delay in time to move into position as quick as you can at attacking before your opponent can get back into position. So how do we do this footwork? Now there's the overhead and there's the forehand. For our forehand, instead of doing the usual shuffle and jump, what we want to do is come over right away with our right foot, left foot, and instead of jumping because we don't have time, we just take a lunge, come up, and hit. That's how we do it. So looking at it all together, it's going to be right foot, left foot, hit. And you can add in the half smash, you can add in the slice smash. For our overhead, it's going to be similar. We're going to do a normal overhead footwork. Turn, it's just on hit. We're going to be leaning back a lot more because the shuttle is going to be slightly behind us. But that's okay. As long as we keep our swing small and quick, from behind us, we want to hit our tap smash or our slice smash. But when you're hitting it, you want to make sure you bring your whole body forward as you're able to hit it. So these are the two defensive footworks that Victor loves doing when their opponent is not back into position after that aggressive push at the net. So that was the defensive smash that he uses very often. Next, let's learn a more offensive smash that he uses. Now, what makes his offensive smash different from other people's offensive smashes? Well, the most important thing is that his hold in his offensive smash is much longer than most other people. Why? Because he has a much higher contact point because of his height and he is also has a very good vertical as well. So what is the hold in our smashes? It's when we move into position right before we hit Jumping into the air and having that hold, being able to hold one second right before we hit. Why is this important? First of all is deception. When we're able to hold, your opponent's going to be standing there all stale, not knowing where you're going to hit. Rather, if you move here and swing right away, then your opponent can tell from your racket swing where you're going to hit. So having that hold is very essential. Secondly, if you're going to be holding, you have to make sure you get into position very early and very quickly. And of course, you need to have enough vertical because if you're holding on a standing shot, it's okay, but it's not as great. So you wanna have enough vertical, come into the air and hold, and then into that hold, hit your tap smash, your stick smash, and your slice smash. And it's gonna be the same on both sides, whether you come up and hold here, or whether you come up and hold here. Now while he's holding, you'll see that Victor Axelson is always very in position. He rarely holds out of position. So on his forehand side, he'll always be doing a scissor kick turn on his smashes with contact point in front. And on this side, he'll be coming up with a hold, hitting and coming forward as well. All relaxed, never too much strength on the smash. He's focusing on precision so that he can come up, follow up with a net kill. So our last step to learning Victor Axelson smashes and learning how to set up for his smashes. You know how to hit the different smashes, you know how to move into the different smashes, but now how do we get our opponent to hit these shots for us to hit these smashes? Well, Victor Axelson has one very unique thing about his playstyle is that he likes to force overly flat shots from his opponent so that he can get these attacking opportunities. Now, what does this look like? First of all, take into account that Victor Axelson is very, very tall. If you're someone who is of a lower stature, this might not be the best gameplay style for you. But if you're someone like me, six feet, then it's an okay style to use. So how you set up for this, first of all, is net play. Net play 
In order to get flat pushes from your opponent, you never want to net super tight. Because if you net super tight, they're going to be lifting super high to the back and you won't get those flat attacks. What you want is to be hitting flat shots on your net play, flat and quick. You wanna make sure you always contact the bird quick. Now where your net should be landing is around this first line. Why? Because when it's coming with this much speed forward, when your opponent is hitting the bird, they have to hit it flatter. And that's your chance to hit those defensive smashing opportunity shots like we talked about earlier. Now the second one is having flatter shots with turns from the back. Now how you get this is of course moving your opponent around the court first. And when you get the opportunity, pressuring their back court, whether with the push, with the clear, and in their back court when they hit shots down here, they'll be hitting it flat, but still upwards with a little bit of height. Now this is when you use your holding smash because you have more time to get in position. They hit those clears, you come up, do your holding smash, and then you go for the kill. So in general, your net play, keep it flat, keep it quick for your defensive smashes setups and for your back court, move them to the front and then quickly to the back for them to hit that recovery clear, which you can do your hold smash from. So that's everything you know to start smashing like Victor Axelsson. Of course, you won't be smashing exactly like him, like I said, because of the height difference. That's his, one of his most unique selling points, but we can bring in the strengths of his smashes into our own gameplay, from stick smashing, precision, slice smashes, when he uses those smashes and how he sets up. Now, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, it would be really great if you could support our channel with a like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, again, for a limited time only, we have our free online badminton academy. So join now, link down below, and we'll see you in our next badminton tutorial.